Today we tell the story of a young man completely transformed when he witnessed a famous and historic Appalachian tragedy, leading him to a life his family and friends would never have predicted. Hello folks, I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, with another one of the stories of Appalachia. Always interesting to hear a story like this, Steve, about one person going one particular way and then something just turns them in the middle of the road. They create a new fork, so to speak, in the road and go in an entirely different direction. It's either good or it's bad. And in this case, the gentleman went in a direction that just incredible what he did. Yeah, it's amazing that the thing that he observed which is one of the most horrific events in Appalachian history, actually had a very positive impact on his life, as you'll see. Well, folks, today we have an inspiring story to share about a remarkable figure who dedicated his life to transforming the culture of violence and promoting education in the southern Appalachian region. We're talking about Robert Bob Walter Childress, a Presbyterian minister whose impact on the community was nothing short of extraordinary. Born on January 19th, 1889, or possibly January 19th, 1890, in the Hollow, which it's known as in Ararat, Virginia. Back in my parts, we call it the Holler, but they called it the Hollow there near Ararat. Bob Childress grew up amidst the primitive Baptist tradition. Growing up in the impoverished and isolated Buffalo Mountain community, Bob's early life was fraught with violence, alcoholism, and ignorance. He often resorted to violence himself and struggled with heavy drinking. However, his life took a significant turn when he witnessed the tragic massacre of, at all places, the Carroll County Courthouse in 1912. It was a turning point that led him to renounce drinking and to pursue a different path. Now, Rod, I, I didn't find this out, but I'm just wondering if maybe with the drinking and the violence that he was doing, whether or not he might have been there waiting for his turn in court when all this mm -hmm. happened. What do you think? Could very well have been. You know, it's it's hard to say. Don't know about, I guess, the records from that time. Very sketchy, the situation and everything, because it's like we've said before in the previous podcast that we did on the uh, Carroll County Courthouse. It was pandemonium that day. Pandemonium all across the uh, there in the Hillsville area and especially there at the courthouse. It was indeed. Well, regardless of why he was there, Bob Childress did make a life-changing decision to quit drinking and entered law enforcement. Eventually, he got married and had children, but his life's calling was yet to reveal itself. One day, fate led him to visit a Presbyterian church, and that visit had a profound impact on him. He felt a calling to become a minister and devoted himself to studying and attending school, even returning to high school at the age of 30, alongside his son, if you can believe that. Wow. Well, it's incredible how his dedication to education and personal growth paved the way for his journey into the ministry. Bob Childress enrolled at the Union Theological Seminary in Richmond, Virginia, and in 1926, he was ordained as a Presbyterian minister, determined to save the people of his Appalachian home. The folks in these mountains of southwest Virginia were predominantly under the influence of the primitive Baptist denomination known as, well, the hard shells, with their strict traditions and reluctance toward change. Despite odds stacked against him, Childress was determined to make a difference in the lives of his fellow mountaineers. Riding his Model T along bumpy dirt trails, he introduced himself and his faith to families and invited them to Sunday services. However, he faced resistance at every turn. You see, these people, used to their isolated and impoverished lives, hesitated to join the church due to feelings of shame about their tattered clothing and limited education. The Reverend Childress, though, did not give up. He extended his hand of compassion and kindness to the community, providing secondhand suits to the men and dresses to their wives. Soon, women in the area found solace in his church, but the men were 
while still skeptical. And those men, known for their drinking, fighting, and general lawlessness, well, they required a different approach. Childress fearlessly tackled their sins in his sermons, openly rebuking violence and abuse, and urging them to embrace a path of transformation and redemption. Well, Steve, Childress wasn't just a man of words. He was also a man of action. He knew that idleness was a major obstacle to growth in both the spiritual and financial realms. What have I heard about that before, about idleness? Something about the mind and everything else kind of goes along with that. Well, to engage the men in meaningful work, he took a loan and set up a sawmill to cut timber, offering them an opportunity to earn an honest living. Through his words and his actions, he quickly gained a reputation for his warm and personal preaching style, becoming in demand by established churches throughout Virginia and the eastern United States. Yet Bob's heart was set on returning to the Appalachian community to make a difference. Over the course of 30 years, he founded and led congregations in six famous rock churches located in Meadows of Dan, Bluemont, Buffalo Mountain, Slate Mountain, Dinwiddie, and Willis. And Rod, remarkably, all but the Willis Church are still in use by Presbyterian congregations to this day. In 2007, these churches were listed in the National Register of Historic Places as the Reverend Robert Childress Presbyterian Church's Multiple Property Document, or MPD. But the impact of Bob Childress did not stop there. His congregations played a pivotal role in bringing education and economic development to the Buffalo Mountain area of Floyd County, Virginia. Absolutely, Steve. In the 1950s, Bob was leading services in an outstanding 14 churches a week, traveling tens of thousands of miles annually. His dedication and passion for his work were truly commendable. The Synod of Virginia recognized the immense good he accomplished. As they put it, only eternity will tell the tremendous good accomplished in this unusual diocese. Sadly, Bob Childress passed away from a heart attack in Roanoke in 1956 at the age of 65 or 66, depending on what year he was born, leaving behind a profound legacy that uh, would continue to inspire generations to come. His life and work were so impactful, they were chronicled in a book titled The Man Who Moved a Mountain by Richard C. Davids in 1970. And his story doesn't end there. His unfinished autobiography and biographies of his eight children were later published in Children's Cousins from the Hills and Hollas of Southern Virginia, as Rod said, the Hollers of Southern Virginia, by Catherine R. Vestal in 2022. Bob Childress's journey from a troubled young man to a respected minister who made a lasting difference in the Appalachian region is a true testament to the power of determination and the desire to bring positive change to one's community. And all that from watching the most horrific thing that you could imagine, that massacre at the courthouse in Hillsville. Wow. Kind of like the massacre that um, happened on the Damascus Road when yes. one particular apostle lost his sight and then turned around and regained it back and turned around and led another life. It's probably one of the most, oh gosh, effective, um, I guess more than anything else, voice uh, back in those days of leading people to Christ, leading people to God and understanding. This man used what could be a very similar situation that turned him from his warring ways, if you want to call it that, his drinking ways, and turned him into a man very well respected in the mountains, or at least by a lot of people throughout the eastern United States. And I think he earned that respect because he went through what a lot of his congregants were going through when he was trying to help them out. Right. Don't you think? Yep. And folks, that's the story of renowned Appalachian preacher Bob Childress, another one of the stories of Appalachia. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe to the Stories Podcast so you don't miss any of our stories. You can find us on your favorite podcast app. We're also on TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook at Stories of Appalachia, and on Twitter, Threads, and Instagram at Story Appalachia. Until next we meet, y'all take care. 
So long, everybody.